Iron Maiden Snake on Brain is one of the most renowned drummers in the world of heavy metal. Yes, that's true. And we all, of course, love and respect Nico for being basically the soul of Iron Maiden. Welcome, boys and girls. How are you? And what about his drumming when Iron Maiden are performing live on stage? Is Nico one of those drummers who tends to oversimplify things when playing live? And overall, how accurate is Nico McBrain when playing in front of thousands of Iron Maiden fans? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, okay. So you know the drill. As always in this series, let's first of all take a look at some of the isolated drum parts for Nicomog Brain, see how accurate Nicomog Brain is when playing live in front of his devoted fans, and then discuss a little something about Nicomog Brain's drumming overall. Here you go. <laughs> I guess that's why Nico is a legend. Who happens to be the best looking bloke in the band. That's right. Don't you agree? Totally. When Nico McBrain replaced Clive Burr in Iron Maiden in 1982, most Iron Maiden fans held their breath in fear. And not really because they didn't trust Steve Harris's judgment, but simply because of the fact that by then, Clive Burr became such an essential part of the Iron Maiden rhythm section that most Iron Maiden fans simply couldn't imagine the band without him. <laughs> And so the band decided to give Nick McBrain a proper introduction to the Iron Maiden family and opened the legendary album Peace of Mind with an intro which dispelled most of the fans' doubts right away. <laughs> And since then, together with the band's founder and bassist Steve Harris, forged one of the most recognizable rhythm sections in the world of heavy music. We're truly the best heavy rock you know, a hard progressive rock bass player in the whole wide world, and I'll play with him. Absolutely. Who would agree with that? Yeah. Uh, my 
the way, it is important to know that before joining Iron Maiden, Nick Mark Brain has played in multiple bands of absolutely various musical genres. <laughs> believe that it is that diverse background which has helped Neko to sound unique and distinguish himself from most other heavy metal drummers. Like for example his usage, or better say non-usage, of double bass, which according to Neko himself he didn't want to get into because he didn't really want to overcomplicate things for himself. I just felt that I didn't want to um, use two because I found one was hard enough. <laughs> By the way, the only time Nick McGrain actually incorporated a double bass setup was on the song Face in the Sand of the album Dance of Death. And it was only because Adrian Smith has forced Nico to do so. Adrian Smith wrote right? this song, he had a drum pump, whatever it was. And he says, You can play that, we won. I oh, said, very, very nice. Thank you for the vote of confidence, Adrian, but I can't. And here's the thing, I personally believe it is at least partially due to Nico's reluctance to confront to the standards of what a heavy metal drummer should be. He was able to co-build such a recognizable rhythm section, becoming a stable backbone for one of the greatest heavy metal bands to ever walk the earth. By the way, it is also worth pointing out that since 2000, Think My Brain apparently identifies himself as a hobbit and almost exclusively performs barefoot. <laughs> Yet to be fair, I guess I have to say that it's not really because Nico prepares himself for a long trip to cast a magic ring at Doe Fire, but because according to Nico, performing barefoot gives him much more freedom. <laughs> and by the way, if you are a gear gig, Nico and Brain actually provides amazing and detailed walkthroughs of his drum sets, which even I, not being a drummer, truly enjoyed because of the aesthetics of it. So uh, that's the that's the drums. But anyways, what do you guys personally think about Nico and Brain's stage performance? Is he really that great or is he one of the most overrated drummers in the world of heavy metal? Please let us know in the comments. As well as whether you would like to see an episode on how Nick McBrain almost left Iron Maiden just several months after joining the band and what does one of the greatest live albums of all time have to do with it? Also, please do not forget that the war in my country is still going on. So continue supporting Ukraine in any way you possibly can, including by purchasing Metal Builder merch to rock at your next Iron Maiden show. Thank you so much for watching this short video, guys, and we will prevail. Slava Ukraini!